Hello, my name is Michael Garcia, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about some research that I've done into the Nat Urozy, um origins. Um, and the Nat Urozy is mostly based on um, a library called Graphics Services Library. This is the library that handles all the rendering for 2D and 3D. And the Nat Urozy got a cut down version of it, but I think um, the professional developers also had to. Um, work within or work with the GS library um, yeah so we'll get to it um, I don't have a script or anything so I'm just talking over images so then early 90s the video games looked like this it was the, the, this is the arcade from Japan the scene there um, the only 3d one to my knowledge is virtual racing uh, also again when in the home console video game market uh, virtual uh, Star Fox was pretty much the only one to my knowledge anyway um, Star Fox and Batman Returns has a bit of 3D also Sonic CD has a bit of 3D as well this is the United, United States um, and in Japan it's pretty much the same and in the UK also it's all 2D based and it's also most of the development of these uh, computer uh, video games were really assembly based as well uh, so Star Fox on the Super Nintendo flat shader polygons um, a few textures basic animation it, it, there's a bit of um, 3d morphing but pretty basic uh, virtual racing this is the arcade and I think it looks nice but it's very uh, basic I guess um, hardly any textures flat shaded mostly uh, I think it's still impressive uh, early early 90s 3d animation um, by the 90s I think everyone was seeing 3d everywhere especially on TVs and ads and in movies uh, this is from 96 this is a Sony produced video that they released it's on YouTube it's pretty interesting it just shows some animation and in 3d it's yeah it's it's interesting um, this is a different behind the scenes of Toy Story um, YouTube video um, but yeah this is this is how they they uh, worked in 3d using silicon graphics this is an 80s video um, which is interesting again working in wireframe um, and that's the rendered that's the model. It's surprising that they had a live model. Um, an another different sec section using the same software here. Oh, the Dire Straits from 85 or 86. The Lawnmower Man, early 90s. Terminator 2, early 90s. Silicon Graphics Machine. This would have been a workstation from the late 80s, early 90s. M most likely into the th like. Ten twenty thousand dollars worth of hardware. So early nineties computers, um, the Mac OS. The Mac OS was probably seen as one of the the better GUI operating systems. Um, this is the the three D O development environment. Um, someone uploaded an, an image an image with all the software installed into it. It runs okay, but it's it's yeah pretty limited. Um, yeah. Uh, Windows 3, 3.1. Um, I I remember using it, but it wasn't it wasn't that great. It was okay for Word. Um, Windows Word. Obviously DOS. Everything, everything that needed resources went through DOS. Um, yeah, which put a lot of pressure on developers to to support the hardware. Um, so this was before Windows 95 and and DirectX and etc. So a quick history on Sony. Um, Sony co-developed the compact disc with Philips. They developed Betamax. Um, so I, I guess publishing, uh, the format is a publishing term from from books inherited by, by other media. Um, yeah. So Sony's hardware includes radios, cassette tapes, Betamax players, CD players, Walkman, Discman, camcorders, etc. Um, 
and this is very little known actually um sony had computer technology in the mid 80s they called it a news workstation um and they developed their hardware and operating system um, the hardware was used with this system g system g was to my knowledge a software package that generated 3d imagery for television so commercial tv commercials and, and intros and outros that kind of thing and it was built on their their news um, hard workstation hardware um, they also, uh, Sony also developed games in ImageSoft for Sega in the late 80s to early 90s. Um, so this is my notes from reading the book, um, Revolutionaries at Sony. The book is pretty short, it's I think 200 and something pages. Um, Archive has a feature where you can just play it and listen to it, which is interesting. It's not that bad actually. Um, so I'll be getting, I'll be going through the book, reading, reading some of the excerpts. Um, Paul actually does a good review of the book. Um, yeah, his t his takes. A, I agree with his his opinions. Um, so yeah, if if you're interested in someone's review then yeah, Paul's video is pretty good. So, okay, so I'm just pretty much gonna read and interject my thoughts where, where I think is required. So, um, at the start, this is at the start where they're um, um, approaching companies um, to, to, to see if they'd sign up to their, their platform. Sony decided to ask software companies directly over a three month period starting in May 93. First they would attract game creators with the PlayStation's technolo technological appeal, then the creators would put pressure on management and Sony would subsequently win the company over. However, Sony's plan to meet creators was usually foiled because management would typically take the lead in the initial meeting and the creators remained in the background. Usually the reaction was, Sony shouldn't get involved with video games. We're telling you this for your own good. The technological superiority of PlayStation was not easily easy to, uh, I jumped to a different page here, but it wasn't easy to, to convey, I guess. I think they were showing images initially, which didn't really attract many people, but it, did for Namco, so Namco, they had reasons to sign up to, to Sony's platform because Namco was an arcade manufacturer so they couldn't really sign up to, to Sega because of competition. Anyway, I'll continue. 3D computer graphics won't happen for another 10 years. Only people who have no idea of the realities of software development would talk about programming games in computer lang programming language C. So he's he's saying here that um, the the technology is so far away for home consoles uh, that it, that 3D won't happen in at least ten years, uh, which I guess he was a bit right and wrong because 3DO was just around the corner and 3DO can do 3D although it's pushing it I guess, um, and he's also saying that you don't program consoles the same as computers. Uh, consoles are programmed back then they were programmed in assembly um, there were not too many compilers compiled to to those those 8-bit and 16 chips but anyway so mostly yeah mostly not programmed in the programming C language we didn't think a 3d computer graphics game machine was possible but we're truly impressed. The texture rendering and moving computer graphics dinosaur are wonderful. An average game maker won't be able to create software for it. Um, so this is after they've been so after they approached companies with an, with images, they approached them with videos, and then they started seeing the dinosaur. And obviously, they they couldn't believe it that it would be a a home system. Um, and here they're saying that they it'd be hard it would be hard to create software for um, which Sony kind of fixed in their own way I guess uh, and then Virtua Fighter was shown in a Japanese um, 
show, I guess, I think in 93, if I remember from my notes. So everyone saw um, Virtual Fighter and they were impressed with the animation of... So before, before seeing Virtual Fighter, 3D animation was very primitive. It was basic objects, so um, like mechanical, things like tires spinning, things going around something. It wasn't, it wasn't, um, it wasn't like a human-based animation. It was robotic, whereas a human figure, it wasn't seen before. And th that really impressed developers. Um, so once the developers saw this, they started contacting Sony. So um, I'll continue. Oh, actually, um, uh, the artist management theory was um, Sony Music. Sony Music, I think they are, um, was handling the PlayStation project in large, um, and um, they use the same artist management. The artist management theory is um, making the artist um, the most important. So the, the creative as in the, the person being the creative figure as in the most important. That's all that is. Specifications were disclosed to software companies in, the earl, in early 94. How could software development time be minimized? Uh, create a friendly environment. So Sony... Sony were trying to impress developers with with their hardware and wanting software for an, an, an eight so it would have been like early 94 to release in later 94 so we're talking maybe eight months eight months of development and and especially in a 3d environment it, it would have been just interesting so I in 3D has its own challenges. 3D has a challenge of the the mathematics involved in 3D is just three. It's more than three times harder than 2D. It's it's pretty hard. Um, yeah. So the maths, and then the harder part of of 3D as well is um, the animation, the pipeline, or the asset pipeline, is a lot a lot harder. Um, so yeah, and to do, to that learning. That, that that huge learning um, would have yeah would have been just impressive. That's that's why the early three D game, the early PlayStation game, the early PlayStation launch only had a few three D games, not that many, um, and they weren't that great to be honest. Um, how could software development be minimized? Create friendly uh, create a friendly environment. Um, Development power on improving software development tools. Uh, we provided an environment for communicating with game programmers via dedicated network. The, the dedicated network was a BBS. Um, yeah, because we understood the technical details. So here they're saying because they they designed the hardware, the processor, and everything that they had an environment that that could rapidly teach developers. Um, which I, I guess, to their credit, they, they did. Um, so we beg it. So we began working on dedicated PlayStation library software alongside hardware development. If anything, we worked harder on the library. So the hardware started, I, th I think, in from uh, '92 or '91. I can't remember. Um, so yeah. Uh, We'll get, we'll get to, to more detail. Uh, when you make an automo when you make an automobile you use screws in different places. You use the same screws for different models. It's the same principle. So here's he's, he's talking about um, making software reusable um, and it doesn't matter the type of software. So if, in this instance he's talking about games and he's, so basically like if you, if you if you've got a 3D game, you're going to use a 3D pointer, a 3D vector, or a 3D point, that kind of thing. Um, the library contains software that is required, no matter the the game being created. Yep. So CD-ROM, or so okay. For example, the library includes the software used to read data from the CD-ROM or memory card. In other words, it's software that doesn't have the characteristics of a particular title. So this this book was. Uh, I believe, I think, I mean, 
translated. Uh, the author's to me sounds Japanese. It makes sense if if it was written in a native language of Japanese, and it was translated. But there's some points that I found a bit confusing, and it was related to to the the translation. Um, but this part is a, a little bit, I think, disingenuous from. I don't know, because they conflate um, the software, the library that access the CD-ROM or memory card to the, sof the same software that interfaces with the graphic system, which, I don't know, it's, I think it's, that's a bit wrong, because the two are very different. So when you access the CD-ROM, you want it to be performant, but not so much with a memory card, so these things really... You know, as, especially if your if your game doesn't use a CD-ROM in real time, it, 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 the speed of accessing the ROM, the CD-ROM, and the memory card aren't important. Uh, whereas the speed for the graphics is, without a library game, without a library, without a library game, creators must analyze the hardware, devote more time to creative. So, yeah, so they wanted to get the de the developers to devote more time to creative thinking. This development style was virtually non-existent before the PlayStation. So, like I said, most consoles before PlayStation were programmed in assembly and you had to go through their specs and, and learn um, that certain type of um, assembly or machine code even. Um, so Kudaragi's team expected creators to find it both initiative and helpful. The, re the reality was not as they had imagined. So, yeah, th they went into an industry um, with, with, yeah, with, with the ex expectation that, that, that they could convince developers to program in C using their library. And, um, like I said, it, it worked, but... Um, Learning C, I don't think, is that much of a challenge. Um, but yeah, uh, it continues. We've we focused on software used by video game software creators. Our perspective was how to make creators enjoy producing games for us. If we provided such software, we thought more software houses would join the PlayStation camp. Um, at the same time, 3DO. 3DO was a very expensive um, console for the time. It was a multimedia based, which was, it had some similarities to PlayStation. In fact, PlayStation borrowed a few things, including their staff. <laughs> but um, the 3DO was also programmed in C as well. Um, and I, yeah. So, continuing. Um, none of the software development teams had had any experience with games. So the people developing the Sony library didn't have any experience developing games. Uh, not necessarily a bad thing, but it kind of sounds bad. Anyway, I continue. Um, they began basic library design in December 92. All we had was faith and conviction that a, a particular software program was essential in a common library. Instead of making things customers asked us to make, we made whatever we believed they would need. Uh, this sounds a bit, a bit arrogant, I guess. Um, it's not. I don't think they were complete noobs at making games. Kuduragi knew games. He played games. He's, he had children that played games. Um, and when they were designing the the Nintendo PlayStation, they actually made games that Kudaragi didn't like, apparently. That's an interesting story. It's in the book. Um, so, I'll, I'll continue. Uh, the point of the library is that it can be used by all. So yeah, they made it... The, if anything, the, the PlayStation was over-engineered, I think. it Graphically, it supported a lot. Like, back... If you look at um, existing systems that were there at the time, uh, or, or just about to be launched, systems like the Atari Jaguar, um, the 3DO, I guess, um, um, the this the Sega 32X, um, even the Super Nintendo FX chip, um, the, that kind of 3D was pretty primitive. So 
if you compare that to the PlayStation 3D, um, the PlayStation does texturing pretty well, uh, but more than that, it does the garage shading pretty well as well. Um, and just to show off, it adds lighting, which, <laughs> which back then would have been it adds lighting, fog. What else does it do? It, um, it supports triangles. It supports hard uh, in hardware. It supports triangles. Um, quads natively lines I'm not sure I don't know how it does lines um, I could be wrong on these things I'm not an expert uh, this is just a hobby for me anyway um, so yeah I think the PlayStation was very ambitious and my point is that the library the library was built generically so that er, er, all the features of the hardware were exposed to development and they made one format called the TMD. Um, that's a 3D, a th the PlayStation's 3D format, um, similar to like an OBJ file, but a, a binary or a 3DS for 3D Studio Max. It, it was a binary format um, that um, the library, the graphics library, the graphics service library uh, understood and processed and sp spat out polygons pretty much um, so yeah th th that's that's what they're talking about here um, the the library the library could be used for 2d it could be used for um, any kind of 3d game you name it an FPS it could it could do it the, the format put it this way the format can do any any type of um, 3d animation uh, it's very flexible and it supports all the, the whole hardware set I'll continue. We made customized software for a particular market that asked for accelerator, accelerator type software to increase the speed. So I think this is in reference to um, Namco. They were using the same library that um, Sony were developing because they didn't want to give hardware specs. They thought if they gave hardware specs then the, develop, the developers won't have time to develop another, which is fair and reasonable. Um, to my knowledge, they never did release officially um, the specs in any detail. I'm talking about the, um, I think the GTE they did, but not the 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 graphics chip. I forget what it's called. Anyway, um, so this is in reference to Namco um, saying that it's a bit slow to make a specific type, um, and I think they removed. Um, things like lighting and they just made a, a format and this was I forget what it's called something similar to TMD NPD or something I'm not, I'm not sure so yeah they, they made a custom format which was optimized um, we added we added it to the public library then everyone was able to benefit so yeah okay that's a good thing if the library was that good, surely all creators welcomed its appearance. The reality was not so straightforward. After Sony started supplying the library, the company encountered problems with persuading creators to use it. I don't like using a program written by someone else as is. If he encountered problems caused by the library, he, could, he couldn't deal with them. So here they're saying that because it's they don't have the source code to the libraries, they can't fix it themselves. Um, yeah, that's that was a big issue, um, but I'll get to that. Don't want to use the library. Um, don't want to use the library if he could, if he could possibly help it. Creators mostly agreed that they preferred to write the whole program, even though it meant additional work because they could identify the, the cause of the problems in programs that they had written themselves. Um, so I guess the industry was... So this is the difference between the industry back then and how it is now. Back then, it was... Software was very in-house, or custom, I guess. Um, the, the whole off-the-shelf package thing didn't come around until the mid-late 90s, I guess. So software was very customized. It was seen as um, 
um, a custom solution was an optimal um, solution in, in performance and in, in workflow in, in everything. Um, they cannot be certain whether the cause of the of a problem lay in the library or on, in their own work. So yeah, they're saying to, they wasn't sh they weren't sure if the bug was in their code or Sony's code. Creators suspected creators suspected that the library software was responsible for slowing down their title image movement. So they call it image movement, the rendering, the, the frame rate pretty much is what they're talking about here. Um, so they suspected the Sony library wasn't programmed optimally, which in a way they were right, but anyway. No effect on the visible parts of our game. Uh, so the reply was, please rest assured that our library has no effect on the visible parts of your game. But creators rarely believed him. First I would explain how the PlayStation software works, then someone would raise his hand and say please disclose the library source code, then the whole audience of 200 or so would applaud, a standing ovation from everyone. So yeah, they would, yeah, they, they, I'm assuming it wasn't a trust thing, it was more of a productivity thing, but, well I think Sony, yeah, it, Back then, everyth everything was more secretive, I guess, um, and revealing the code, I guess, would have opened them up somehow. Um, th the message boards um, from back in the day, from the mid-90s, was uploaded in, in a PDF, and the, reading through that, it's pretty interesting. They mention that they want the code, they want the code to the, to the library, um, and I don't think it was ever released. The same thing happened everywhere we went. I couldn't believe it. Machines must not change. Uh, so here he's explaining um, how the machines um, machines must not must not change formats for several years. Um, so the hardware. So they're used to they're used to hardware that just doesn't change, um, and that's why that that's why they can program directly to the hardware. Um, Semi semiconductor semiconductors used in platforms progressed considerably over the period. So here he's saying that the PlayStation used advanced processes and they do change, and that's so. Um, they were told that the PlayStation library is um, for an OS. So the PlayStation OS was pretty much, the, I assume, the library and the BIOS features, um, and they were told to use that. Um, so I'll continue, I'll continue. For this reason, machine makers cannot easily disclose the specifications of the hardware itself because then they could guarantee compatibility. So yeah, if you write to the, to the, the OS layer, then the hardware can change and, 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 and it won't affect older software titles. Hardware specifications of the Famicom were in public, in the public domain. System, this was possible because the system itself was relatively simple but with no but with something as complex as the PlayStation it was difficult to ensure compatibility of application software when changes were made to the hardware. Uh, the kernel and a group of basic programs such as device drivers responsible for ensuring compatibility. Game programmers became frustrated however because they were they are unable to make changes directly to these programs. That's a bit weird. I'm not sure why you'd want to make changes to the kernel. <laughs> I, th I think, yeah, um, it's confusing. Anyway, seniors, ma seniors managing director uh, of Namco said, that's why at the beginning the fact that we couldn't operate the machine ourselves was a source of stress. It's like scratching an itch on your foot without being able to take your shoe off. It's really frustrating. So these guys developed for arcade machines, and um, these they were on board very early. They they were working on the prototypes uh, that were pretty bad, apparently. Anyway, I'll continue. The team developed arcade games were spe specifically frustrated because with all the previous arcade games they worked 
directly on the hardware. Sony would say, game creators like you shouldn't have to worry about such details, but it was confusing for us because we'd never worked in this way before. That's, I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, in spite of all the negative reactions, uh, Sony persisted in communicating the benefits of the library. He argued that the use of common resources was cru 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 <laughs> crucial was crucial in making game software, as illustrated by the dynamic increase in application software after PC operating systems progressed from DOS to Windows. Um, I don't agree with this because even when Windows 3.1 was around, DOS was was the main platform for games. Even in Windows 95 days, I, I recall um, dropping back to DOS. Um, yeah, Windows booted up from DOS up to even Windows 98 boot, boot did boot from DOS, um, and I think Windows uh, DirectX came with hardware support in the I think late revisions of 95 I'm not 100% sure on that but again uh, I don't agree with that statement his appeal slowly began to have some effect gradually game developers began to, com to comment that the, that when they used the library the number of development processes decreased and the work was surprisingly easy indeed it was thanks to the library that Namco that Namco was able to transplant Ridge Racer from arcade, from arcade game to PlayStation, with a development time of under a year. Um, I think they had a lot longer than a year. Um, to my knowledge, I think it's mentioned somewhere in the book that they started porting Ridge Racer at the start when they first saw um, when they first agreed. So that would have been at least a year and a half, I think. Um, yeah, some developers began to say that they would rely on the library for part of the development because it made such an improvement in efficiency and enhancing library content would also reduce creators workload. Initially the library covered only C programming language and 3D technology. A 2D, techno a 2D, te a 2D technology library was added in response to creators request. So uh, that's interesting that they started on 3D and then added 2D as an afterthought. This is how advanced Sony was that they were encouraging their 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 initial third-party developers to to focus on 3D. I guess that was you know the the wow factor of the day. Um, so yeah, and developers did sing its praise because they made the like I said before the 3d pipeline relatively easy um, even for the net uh, there were there were some tools that did some plugins um, for 3d 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 studio it, I think it was before it, it, it was the DOS version before it went max um, but yeah um, we could, we would fix something because someone asked us to, only to find that someone else objected. So, okay, here they're talking about uh, maintaining that library, um, um, and they would find bugs in the in the library. Building the library to retain the original software and put version numbers on revisions. So they would fix the library and then someone would complain that they, you know, that they worked around that fix. So they had to add numbers to to keep everyone happy, which at the time it makes sense. Um, it is a bit embarrassing for our library staff to have so many versions because it means the original wasn't very good. I don't agree with this because nowadays this is so off obfuscated that, it, yeah. Um, but back then it was the optimal way, I guess. Um, nowadays we have C++ polymorphism, uh, we have uh, probably DLLs and all that kind of thing would have, you wouldn't know, you would yeah. And the, it, it'd be all cluttered full of if and if else statements and that kind of thing to check the version that you're running. Whereas this would have just, yeah. 
and I don't think they had that many revisions not that I know I don't know uh, at least the net Eurosy I think there's a few twos and maybe I saw a four I can't remember uh, three f so they started with three fi uh, 350 functions but today there there are 1800 at one stage 18 employees were involved in the library development so that's that's pretty big um, I, th I think the library development might also include plugins and that kind of support I would assume um, Namco senior management senior management said Ridge Racer in May 1993 oh, they began development of Ridge Racer in May 1993 so yeah that's more than way more than a year uh, the library had only the bare minimum of necessary functions we were the ones that really built up the library we cooperated with the library development staff by telling them oops, by telling them that items and functions by telling them what items and functions we wanted from so from Sony's point of view we were more of a second party than a third party developer so yeah um, I think like I said before Sony just gave them a format that did everything and Namco said okay that's great that it can do everything but it's if you look at the format it is very big very big indeed and it's bloated it's bloated and the bloat usually results in slow so th this is why there's such a disdain and 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 um, kind of snubbery of of the GS library There's, it's pretty common to see on the internet it's pretty funny actually um, it doesn't bother me I don't really care either way um, I know what I'd rather use and I'd rather use this if, if I mean I guess I'm biased but anyway let's continue um, Bill Gershwin um, this is an interesting Google talk um, it, it goes through um, the history of video games and and their uh, I guess their, their achievements and milestones and successes the different um, hardware advancements and that kind of thing um, he he worked on the Pippin he worked on the 3DO and then then he worked on the PlayStation which I think is pretty great um, uh, he does talk about the PlayStation and he does talk about the PlayStation 2. It's a video I recommend watching if you're interested in this kind of thing. Um, the screenshot, he's 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 saying speed, speed, speed. He's saying uh, write as in when you write a program. The whole design of a video game is just speed, speed, speed. And you have to know that. You have to get, you have to get that. If you don't get that, you fail and he continues to say you fail in the market um, implying that it's it's going to be slow or it's the frame rate's not going to be there or I mean he's this this was from 2008 and he's talking about a time from the early 90s so he's right speed speed was everything back then um, and he challenged Ken, Kutu, Ken Kuturagi to to give specifically the Crash Bandicoot guys some kind of um, hardware access um, you can see it on the slide here PlayStation Crash Bandicoot so um, I don't think they gave developers access to hardware I think they gave them like a workaround with opcodes linker opcodes I'm not 100% sure I haven't looked at the professional library in any detail just out of I glanced at it out of curiosity but it didn't find anything that was useful to me anyway um, but yeah I, I find Bill Gershwin's uh, talk very interesting um, this nowadays has changed obviously because speed isn't an issue now it's I guess where well, most most hardware these days is, is, has plenty of speed and has plenty of resources so this is nowhere an issue but in the PlayStation days, yes, it was, and the library and the format did did hinder it. So, um, and yeah, it, it 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 helped. I mean, yeah, this is a screenshot of um, uh, the the bulletin board 
um, the PDF, someone uploaded a PDF with um, bulletin board messages from back in the day, in the, uh, in the 90s. And um, I just searched for black box and it's interesting um, that they refer to the, the GS library as a black box. Uh, the net Eurozy being a black box uh, anyway I thought that was interesting um, but uh, the, the main argument was um, to have access to the source code um, that's all they were pretty pretty much arguing for um, uh, and this is this is the format that um, I, I believe Namco came back to Sony and said yeah the TMD format is great but can you give us something a bit more performant? And I'll, I'll just read this. Um, I have limited knowledge of PMDs, but I think they were only good if you don't need to do lighting. So this is what I, yeah. True, the, the PMD model type was created for situations where lighting can be predetermined. So I'm assuming they're predetermined and then, and then use Garaud shaded colouring or, or shading. But for many situations that is the case. Also there is nothing to stop one from going into the PDM, uh, the PMD and doing lighting calculations. The real advantage of PMD is its nature of being based upon rendering primitives and the routines that place them into the ordering table, into the ordering tables are assembly. For example, both Ridge Racer and Tekken use PMDs. That's where they came from. When Sony was working with Namco to get Japan launch titles completed, PMDs were the result of their cooperation. So, yeah, very interesting. Um, both these titles, both made by Namco. Namco. Anyway, um, yes. Uh, so this is a screenshot of my website. I um, I found this. This is an, a post um, made by Colin Colin Hughes um, in the Net Eurozy bulletin board. I'll re I'll read it. It touches on what I just read before. When the PlayStation was first released to developers, the first version of LibGS, which wasn't very good as the Eurozy LibPS, the, the Net Eurozy LibPS is is the net Eurasia version of libgs it wasn't very good uh was pretty much all there was for quick 3d ridge racer was produced in a very short time and the developers didn't have any cd access at all on their prototypes i think a lot of input came from namco and was used to improve the 3d capabilities of libgs uh, yes but uh, Net, the Net Eurozy didn't get the TMD format, so yeah. Anyway, so in my opinion, you could you could quite easily produce a Ridge Racer clone using the the Eurozy libs. I agree. I think yeah, I agree. It's yeah. Anyway, Stuart played around with a very simple car game model that runs at 60 FPS with two cars racing split screen. That is available on the website. You can easily take some of the ideas that he used, that he uses, and add more graphical polish. The secret to producing a good racing game is to forget about the tracks as being, oops, as being in a 3D world and split it into sections that you race, like a Skeletrix or model railway track. You can then generate a screen by drawing the background track pieces from the position of the car up to a clipping point ahead on the track. I know that this is that this doesn't work very well for crossing tracks, but there are none of those on the original Ridge Racer. If these pieces, straight, left, turn, by the lighthouse, under bridge, are separate TMDs, then this then this becomes quite simple. Then this becomes quite simple with the Eurozy libs. So he's saying um, just to have s separate models for each part of the, the track and just render them in front up to the, the clipping. Um, yeah, um, I, in my research I found that sending sending the least amount of, of objects 
is better. So, um, yeah, I'd 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 say just build one model and just send that one model to it. I'm not sure how big. I did that with my little demo that I did in 2016, but that was really nothing. That was I think that was a few hundred quads, if that. But anyway, um, so yeah, it's interesting the the connection between. Um, the libgs and the net Eurozy version and and how ridge racer play actually ridge racer is mentioned a lot when reading the net Eurozy um articles okay so uh the data volume of, of ridge racer namco's first playstation game is two megabytes so they're saying here that Ridge Racer, the executable is only two megabytes. The the rest of the CD is is not needed. Once the PlayStation has read the Ridge Racer program from the CD-ROM, it has no further use for the CD-ROM, which is pretty much the Net Eurozy model, which is just yeah. Um, this is interesting. This is from a presentation from the American. Um, Net Eurozy program. Um, this was a presentation from '97, um, where they talk about um, a, a game called Survival. Um, so I'll read this. This uh, this question was raised, and I thought it was interesting and pertinent to this talk that I'm doing now, right now. So, question: I've been talking to some local game companies, and they are unimpressed with me using LibGS. Sad face. That's a little disappointing and a main reason for getting lower level li level lower level libs, even not the bare metal hardware. So he's saying that he's approached companies, uh, game development companies, and he's mentioned that 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 he's using the libgs. He, he doesn't have a choice. But the net Eurozy was just uh, libgs or or nothing, unless you reverse engineered some of the. Uh, the OT table stuff, um, but yeah, I don't think many people did that. Um, although there are examples of it, but anyway. Um, so the reply uh, that Bill gives: uh, some of the commercial games that I can mention because they are ours, as in they are Sony's, that use LibGS are Pap Parappa, the Rapper, and IQ. Um, both of which have sold huge numbers in Japan and which are expected whoops, uh, huge numbers in Japan and which are expected to be in the top 10 selling games in the US there have been several very good games with third parties that use libgs I will try to get permission from the developers publishers to post the names so um, obviously Namco is one of them. Um, Cap Capcom, I would say, if you look at anything early, and by early I mean anything that would have been developed before I think maybe mid or late 1995, would have been just libgs exclusively. The yeah, so and I think um, Resident Evil would would come under that. So um, yes. Uh, Papa the rapper, uh, Parappa the Parappa the the rapper, I think is interesting. Um, if you look at it, I think it's actually skeletal, skeleton-based animation. In that, um, I think it's which is pretty rare on the PlayStation One. You don't see much of that. It, it was popular on the Nintendo sixty four because it was pretty much twice the power of the PlayStation in every regard. Um, so this is a video from um, Modern Vintage Gamer. Um, I like his stuff, and he he credits, and he also links to his sources, which is fantastic. Um, this is a video called "Why Was the Sony PlayStation 2 So Hard to Develop Program uh, Games for?" He also did one for the PS3, um, and I, I came across this, and um, um, so the the quote is one program who wishes who wished to remain anonymous, pinned his dislike of the PS2 on the tools that were created for it. 
Sony provided an extensive library with PlayStation, the library would do a lot of the work. But with PS2, there is no library. We need to create our own library, which poses its own set of problems in that there are so many choices to achieve the same effects. So, um, to, if you're not familiar with the LibGS, or um, it's, I, I can best describe it as um, immediate mode, it's something like OpenGL immediate mode, but instead of uh, with triangles and, and lines and quads as primitives, it's objects as primitives. So um, you have a, you have state, you have um, so the lights lights are a state, and then you send. Um, you send your objects in a stateful way in that um, um, they have to be uh, sorted um, painters algorithm that kind of thing so anyway um, this is the link to that same article and um, reading it is it's interesting um, I found this guy interesting um, he's, he's from Capcom he says um, openly admits his admiration for Sega's easily programmed hardware. So he's talking about the Dreamcast, and then he gets asked, um, when asked which which is harder to program for, PS2 or Saturn, he replies, PS2 is harder, hands down. This is a bit off topic, but um, Capcom has, has a history of working with um, Sega. Um, and specifically, um, Capcom used the same CPU that's that Sega did, um, and Capcom um, also developed um, on the 32x, which has the same the same chip. So they they would have been very familiar with with the Saturn. So it's a bit off topic, but yeah, I saw that and I thought, oh, that's a bit wrong. So. Capcom being very well familiar with um, Sega Saturn, they were, they knew what they were doing, and then to be given a PS2 on you know whenever all the other developers got it and said here you go make a game, um, I thought that was interesting. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. And so back to, back to this. Um, so I didn't know the PlayStation Two didn't have high level high-level libraries like the PS1 did. I find that a bit weird, but I mean, you got to put things in perspective. This would have been early 2000s. Um, everyone pretty much made their own engine. It was just assumed you'd start with your, your own custom engine and um, like the thought of, of someone giving you a third-party library was limiting as per the same discussions prior. It's, it's, it's almost weird. It's like yeah, but it, it kind of makes sense now, especially with, with the PS2 being a lot more powerful, similar to our machines that we have now are so powerful, that's when you want the high level, high level libraries. And I think nowadays that mentality has changed to, well, why would you want to code your own engine? It, that doesn't make sense. You know, it's already been done. I wish there was some kind of middle ground, like, yes, but... You know, yes, sometimes it's good to make your own engines, and no, sometimes it's not. But this is what he's talking about here. He's talking about um, that they had to um, design their own pro their own engine, and and yeah. So I'm assuming the PS2 was something similar to like OpenGL, that, that kind of interface, that low level interface. Um, yeah. Um, So the other thing as well, um, the Japanese, I'm not sure why, but the Japanese um, really liked um, the LibGS stuff. And you can see this through the whole PlayStation life in in, in Japan. So you could see LibGS um, games being released in Japan right up to the, the late 90s, which is completely different to, I think, to the Western countries where they just moved away from LibGS as soon as Sony provided something a bit lower level. Um, yeah, But yeah, the Japanese, if you look at some of their weird games, well, weird to Westerners, I guess, um, they, 
yeah, they definitely adopted the the PS uh, the GS libraries um, way more than than the West. I I believe. I th I'm, it, it makes sense if you if you if you learn how to use the libgs very well then well, i guess stick to it i guess especially for budget games and like um like games that obviously never saw the light out of out of out of japan they were just budget japanese games i would assume but yeah very popular in japan um and this is i would i would bet my life that this program that said you know sony provided extensive libraries on the playstation is japanese um, so yeah, so this is residential evil. This is horrible screenshot. And anyway, but yeah, it definitely looks like TMD animation, or maybe even P the PMD version. Uh, the rigid based, rigid hierarchical animation type based. Um, uh, the, lastly, this is the same article. Um, someone said something really interesting here, and I thought it was very pertinent to the libgs um, talk uh, argument rationale. To, uh, Konami general manager currently overseeing three PS2 projects puts it another way. If you focus on making full use of all the specs, it will be very expensive and time consuming to produce a game. Instead, if you can focus on one aspect of the game, then I believe you can produce a great game. For example, in an action game, accentuate the gameplay even to the point of compromising other aspects like graphics. So he's saying here, focus on making a good game and you know everything else will, will follow. This is, again, this is th pretty much the opposite of what um, Bill Gershwin was saying about speed, speed, speed. Um, so, but yeah, I can imagine the PlayStation would have been a huge, huge uh, learning learning nightmare I guess um, so this is the net Eurozy document um, yeah the graphics the graphics services um, it, it, so basically it's for accessing the frame buffer and drawing and display and setting up the drawing and display environments um, the integrated graphics um, th these documents were translated from uh, from rigid, from Japanese pretty poorly and then printed um, but then they got revised and they're okay, I guess. Um, various services related relating to 2D and 3D graphics. Objects created with external tools can be controlled through these services. So this is, this is, I believe this is what helped PlayStation in getting um, especially 3D software out there was the, the object created with external tools in that um, so an export format so you'd use Maya or 3D and then do something like the artist would use that tool and then export it and then you'd have an instant instant replay on a, on a test kit or the PlayStation um, so this is from the book Game Engine Architecture um, and I, I saw this and I thought oh this is interesting this is actually from the first from the first book um, any game uh, so there are five basic types of animation used in games and the PS uh, the lib libgs does all these um, it, it's kind of hacky but it does I believe it I believe it to be true that it does so sprite textured animation animation I guess <laughs> yeah the space is wrong um, sprite texture animation. So this is something like Doom, which uses sprites instead of real 3D, which is fine. Uh, rigid body hierarchy animation, which is the early 3D stuff. This is like um, what, what I was talking about with um, uh, a virtual fighter that was and and Resident Evil rigid body hierarchy animation. Uh, skeletal skeletal animation. This is like um, what you see on Nintendo 64 and, and modern games now. Um, vector animation, vector animation. So skeletal animation is, is where you uh, move bones and, and, and then you, the, the, skinned, the skinned mesh just moves uh, on weighted. 
so it's very mathematically intense process process intensive that kind of thing so that's why it's not commonly seen on the on the playstation but i think parappa the the rapper does use it okay um vector animations this is um so just rendering a 3d image and then frame per frame and then the morph target is when you have vector animations and you inter interpolate between every frame which gives you a smooth transition this is what that dino the dino um, demo is it's morph targets and yeah the playstation can well the net you're easy to be specific the libgs tmd format can do it and that's the end of my talk um i think my next talk i guess will be detailing the the animation specifically using the tmd i find that interesting that it is such a huge format but it, it it's you could say it's a powerful format if you know how to work it um and and you know it's it's um things that make it slow down but i hope you've enjoyed this talk and i'll if you have any comments please do comment or questions i should say thanks for watching goodbye Bye-bye.